Hey guys, in this video I want to go ahead and cover pretty much the basics of the attachment system as a whole. So this will kind of allow you to get hopefully a more of an understanding of it, how it works, and really its intended uses. So to begin, the simplest one that is already done is going to be in the character. However, or sorry, on the firearm, because our example firearm that we've been building is already has the bulk of it. But the simplest overall is going to be in the character that is provided by the uh, example content here. So the only reason I say that is because it has in a hat and a plate carrier. So this guy and this guy. So this kind of shows two different types and their, you know, kind of their intended purpose, as well as we have our manager that is used to kind of control some stuff. Now to begin, any, let me try to think of the word, any kind of like root. So for example, a character or a firearm that will have attachments applied to it, in my opinion should have this manager. Now the system can work without it, but the manager has some helpers that'll kind of make everything a little bit easier to work with, as well as some optimizations to it for if you have to continually access various parts of the attachment system, such as certain attachments or iterating through it or seeing every single attachment. You don't have to walk the tree. So it kind of handles things like caching and all that stuff for you. That's actually what this guy is here for. This is to help uh, speed up construction as well as all the caching. Now, if we look at the, we'll start with the hat. That's the simplest one. All the hat is, is a static mesh. So it's an attachment component. So if we want to add a new one, we just add an SKG attachment. But with the hat, it is, like I said, all it is, is just a static mesh. So if we look at the possible attachments it takes in a data asset and it holds a reference to our hat. So this is our hat, our little actor here. So I'm gonna kind of slowly load these up to show you step by step. And then our hat has another attachment for it, which again has its own data asset, which would be for what attaches to the hat. Now, starting from the beginning, we have our attachment component and this attachment component. So for an attachment to be added, it goes through a form of compatibility. So here you can see we have an array called all possible attachments. Now this is just an array of data assets. So if we look at the firearm, this will be a little more self-explanatory. So we have our M4 here. And with our M4, the only thing we have is the receivers. So in terms of attachments, to have a complete firearm, we would need to add the barrel, a muzzle device, handguard, stock, and let's see, pistol grip, and charging handle. Those are all the things that are basically not parts of the firearm. The firearm itself here, as you can see, is just the receivers, the receivers, magazine, and buffer tube. So, like I said, we would need all those parts to complete it. So, what we have is data asset for the barrels. So in this case, we have two barrels. We have the 10 inch and the 14 and a half inch. Then we would have one for the handguards. In our case, we only have one because I only provide one. Then same thing for the pistol grips, the stocks, and the charging handles. And that lets us know what attachments can go where. So for example, you wouldn't want to attach, let's say, this also works for kind of like you would use this concept for magazines. You wouldn't want to put a magazine that belongs in a, another firearm that is incompatible with your own firearm. Same thing, barrels. You don't want to put some barrel from some other manufacturer, or sorry, from some other firearm type into your firearm if it doesn't fit. I'm trying to think of like a very generic way to explain it visually, but yeah, I'm kind of failing at this one. Anyways, so we have our data asset. Now you can add multiple of these. So if I wanted to have, let's say here I have a data asset for hats, here I could have a data asset for helmets, and then another one for hearing protection, so on and so on, you have that ability to do so. Next up we have the default attachment. So this is for the attachment to spawn basically just initially. So when you hit play, if you want the attachment to be there, you can do so. So let me go ahead and load up the example shoot house. All right, so I have the example shoot house. And here you can see my character has no hat. I come over here and under my attachment for the hat, if I set my default attachment, 
to be the hat. I have more than one of these, don't I? Okay, yeah, that's the right one. And I go through and I hit play. If I eject, you can see I now have a hat. Now, you have some randomness to this as well. I don't know if you've noticed with the firearm. So, for example, my firearm has, well, this is its setup. This is with the 14 and a half inch barrel. If I hit play again, now we have the, you know, the 10 and a half. And we still have the hat each time. So under the random default attachment, what we can do is we can give it a random attachment for it to use. Or we can make it to where it doesn't spawn at all. So what I mean by this is it get, allows you to select a random attachment in this configuration where this is checked and this is not. So if, let's say we had 50 different hats. We would select from one of those 50 hats to apply to our character when we hit play. And if we had this checked, we would be able to select from 50 of those hats as well as the possibility of having no hat selected at all. So that's how your random default attachments work. They're there for the like initial spawning. So that's what's going on with the firearm. So still have the short barrel. I like I'm going to keep getting the short barrel every single time I hit play for the example. And now I have the long one. So that's all I'll have. That's really how I have it set up there just by default. Then moving on down. This is stuff specifically for customization. So you can set it up as almost like a component. So for example, I call this one headwear because that's what its category is basically for. Then this guy is plate carrier. So I have it under plate carriers, so on and so on. And then the rest is kind of all, again, specifically for customization. So the minimum and maximum, the snap distance and all that stuff, that's useful for things. Oh yeah, now it shows with a muzzle device. So for things like dragging and moving parts around, all that kind of stuff, that's, you know, what all that is for. Now moving on to the other type, which would be like another skeletal mesh. So for example, this plate carrier here, this guy, is a skeletal mesh and it shares the same skeleton as my character here. So the purpose of it, and again, this is a little bit buggy in the editor, but in standalone, it's pretty much good to go. But the gist of it, is this is a skeletal mesh so we have the ability to set it as well a skeletal mesh so for example we have auto set master pose component so in ue5 it's called leader pose component but this again i support ue4 so this is going to be its name currently until ue4 support gets dropped but we can auto set the master pose component so when we hit play hopefully it's not random you can see here we have our plate carrier so if i look down you can see the plate carrier is following. Kind of goofed a little bit when I was making that, I think. But you can see the plate carrier has its master pose component set up with our character. So it follows it around, you know, with all the leaning and stuff like that, as it's supposed to. So that's what that option is there for. And then we have the some other things. These are kind of dependent on you. So client authoritative attachment change. Basically, if this is true, then the client can just on his own end it'll handle all the rpc calls and setting from the client so if he wants to change out this plate carrier with something else he can and that kind of stuff so if you were to uncheck this then you would have to write your own system to where you handle it server side so this is kind of one of the things where it becomes up to you then lastly we have some previews so this is better showed on the firearm just because it is let's see here we have more parts. So for example, the site. Here we have this data asset. So here's all the possible parts. So we have the hollow site, we have the thermal site, 30 millimeter mounts, and then the micro dot rails, attachments, and all that stuff. So if I select my default attachment index to one, we can basically kind of cycle through it. Hopefully I go slow to you can see I'm going through. And basically this is, you can preview what asset you want to be there. And if you go to negative one, it shows nothing. So that's what that's for. You can pre see all the previews for the snapping and all that stuff. So if I set the snap distance to like four, you can see we now have those as the increments. And same thing, we can show how far it'll go and all that stuff. But that's kind of the gist of the preview system. Pretty straightforward. It corresponds to what you have here in your settings. And yeah, that's pretty much that. So back on to the attachment manager. 
So that's how you can use stuff. Again, like I said, you don't need to use the attachment manager. It is an optional thing. So for very small stuff that you might not be having much with or just kind of you just want something to easily attach and spawn to it or spawn and attach to it, that's one thing that you can do. But you do get some other options here. So for example, override max attachments. So we can have a maximum attachment count that, well, we set here. So right here would be three. So if I have a firearm, like I showed you with the M4, that is just the receivers. If we add the barrel, that would be attachment one. Then if we add the muzzle device, that would be attachment two. Then let's say we add a suppressor onto that muzzle device. That would be attachment three. So if we go through, like it's how many are down in a chain. So that's not going to restrict any other attachments, just what is going from the barrel. So we have those three attachments. Then let's say we had tried to attach something onto the suppressor for whatever reason, if there even would be. You could not do that because your max attachments would be three. But you could still add a handguard, you could add forward grips, all that stuff because they're not related to the barrel. It's not following down that chain. So that's kind of takes care of that. And then the initial on attachment updated delay. So this allows for like bulk construction. So if I hit play, that delay, the exit, that delay fires. And that basically allows everything here in the firing to be constructed because this is all, you know, separate stuff. It's all separate parts. And we would want, like in terms of caching, we don't want everything to fire right off the bat. So for example, let's say a handguard gets added. Well, then we would cache everything. Then the barrel gets added. We recache everything. Light gets added. We recache everything. The 45 also gets added. We recache. We keep recaching and doing the same thing. Instead, this little delay here allows us to go ahead and spawn pretty much everything that's going to be spawned in this example on our character or the firearm or whatever. Wait, and then we cache it. So that's just a little kind of like a startup optimization, if you will. But that pretty much covers the gist of the attachment system. We're going to be going more into depth with this later because, again, we're going to be building our own firearm customization system and all that kind of stuff to show you how to really get more in depth and use it. So when that comes out, I'd imagine if you don't already understand it, you will definitely have a good grasp on it at the end. But, yeah, that's going to be all for this video, so I'll see you in the next one.